This movie has Sylvester Stallone, who was a much younger man in 2003 than in 2024 Spy Kids 3D. Inside the game world the Spy Kids franchise has been something of a phenomena, although one I've studiously avoided. The gimmick of the third outing being in 3D was enough to entice me into the multiplex, but the film itself pushed me to the point of running back out screaming as I went. It's difficult to know exactly what to make of it. The plot is one of the most glorious minimal things on the planet. Kitty agent New Cortez, Daryl Severa, leaves the OSS after the events of the second movie citing a betrayal from his bosses. We're told all of this by A. Burkamp, even by his standards, Alan coming in is disturbingly outside cook in the form of a fairy tale about thumbs. The strange thing is that this isn't even close to being the strangest thing in the film. Janice living as a private detective, saving his do re -me for the release of the newest, hottest video game around, Game Over. A presumably returning kid agent tries to get him to come back to the OSS, flying in through a window with helicopter pickles. This doesn't work, but a call from President George Clooney telling him that his sister, Carmen, Alexa Vega, is stuck inside level 4 game over does. The OSS are trying to shut the game down from the inside as it's actually a secret mind control device programmed by the evil toy maker, Sylvester Stallone. As the strange helicopter-haired girl's mother, presumably, Cheska Giggles, Sam Hayek, explains, after a fashion, the toy maker has been imprisoned inside cyberspace for some reason or other. She doesn't know why, as it was a long time ago. I can't quite decide if this is despicably lazy storytelling or an astonishing moment of unparalleled genius. It made me laugh, anyway. If Matrix was here, he'd laugh too. Jnoy is inserted into the game by Cheska and Donovan Giggles, Mike Judge, the deranged genius behind King of the Hill, Beavis and Butthead and Office Space, where he meets a bunch of beta testers, Rez, Arnold and Francis. Figuring it's best to get rid of the competition for the promised unimaginable riches on completing the game, they tripped Jnoy into bouncing himself to the moon and taking part in a giant robotic stompy battle to the death inside the arena of doom against a young lass, Mectra, Courtney Gines. Eventually winning, he returns to Earth after a brief interlude where the OSS inserts Nee's grandfather, Ricardo Montalban, into the game to help him. Spike hits 3D, Jnui and Carmen inside the game world. The beta tester squad now decide that Jnui is the guy, a sort of video game Moses, fated to lead them to the promised lands of level 5. The shower head off through a variety of familiar video game genres, including a sequence on a game called Megarachi which while not having the polish of the Phantom Menace's Petra sequence is certainly no less kinetic, with the added bonus of having less irritating contestants. The toy master at one point randomly releases Carmen from his grip for the last half hour or so for no particular reason, in keeping with much of the film's events. They eventually shut down the game, after surfing over some lava and Frodo's Baggins is killed. However, for some reason Toymaker has escaped and his giant robot monkeys stomping about the town. The only solution is for Carmel Schnur to call in all the members of the extended Spy Kids family, with seemingly everyone connected to the franchise activating their rocket boots and destroying the robots, and Grandpa Montalban persuades Toymaker back to the right side of the force but forgiving him for something that never gets explains but left Gramps crippled. All's well that ends well, Zuzuya. This film presents a great metaphysical conundrum. Is it possible to have so many plot holes in something that doesn't have the plot? That's far too existential for me so let's lightly skip over it. It's a good job that nigh on everything in this movie is computer generated as otherwise the scenery would have a distinctly chewed motif. While the kids have made some attempt to be normal, given their circumstances, everyone else seems to have taken up a challenge to provide the most shockingly over-the-top performance possible. At least it shows that there are some stars in the world who don't take themselves too seriously and are happily making edits of themselves. Special to audits have to go to George Clooney's Sly Stallone impersonation and to Antonio Banter's surprisingly earnest portrayal of a two-minute role. Spy Kids 3D, back in reality. The real star is Sylvester, and the selection of theme clones he's created of himself, such as Hippie Sly, Scientist Sly and Kaiser Bill Sly. He can quite literally talk to himself. In this film and the effect is, well, interesting. It's all very, very funny for some reason that I can't quite fathom, although I think it might be a self-defense mechanism to stop my brain shutting down given the relentless assault on the senses this film provides. Its big gimmick is the 3D, and without any basis for comparison I can't say if it's any better than any other 3D film but it's not a quantum leap in technology, I'd say. There's a reasonable depth of field created in some scenes, and in others it's far less effective. 
as with the rest of the films this is achieved at the expense of the color balance, but Rodriguez has done his best to select colors inside the game world that minimizes this, and it's only in the last 5 or 10 minutes when the action spills out to the real world that it becomes really obvious. For anyone without kids this is likely to be the only reason to see this, and it's probably worth the cash for the novelty value. Especially if you've not seen any of the other films, expect to feel like you've been smoking crack. Nothing is explained, things happen more or less randomly in the non-stop barrage of cameos and oddities make it difficult to concentrate on the story that's already fragmented to the point of flying apart. This is not in any technical sense a good film, and about the only thing it shares with other movies is that it's shown in a cinema. How does it compare with the other movies? Not a clue. Third-party views suggest that the reason for the previous film's success with the oldsters out there was the dynamic and relationship between Schnurri and Carmen, which is missing in this film due to Carmen not being in most of it. Also there is some suggestion of the Cortez family being more important both thematically and in terms of the plot, and that's most certainly absent in this film. Spy Kids 3D, The Goon Squad. Rodriguez has replaced any kind of clever writing, character development or plot coherency with the 3D effects and CG madness. This is probably not going to concern kids in the slightest, in fact they may well enjoy it more. But for adults, there's not much to appreciate beyond the effects and the occasionally surreal and hysterically funny randomness of Stallone and company. I've no idea how to rate this, it's barely a film. It's like playing a computer game while having your eyeball smacked with riggers while a monkey shoots hero and into your thumb. It's simultaneously the best, worst and most average film I've ever seen. I award director, Robert Rodriguez cast list. Antonio Banderas, Gregorio Cortez, Carla Gugino, Ingrid Cortez, Alexa Vega, Carmen Cortez, Daryl Severa, Jnoy Cortez, Ricardo Montalban, Grandfather, Holland Taylor, Grandmother, Sylvester Stallone, Toymaker, Mike Judge, Donegan Giggles, Sam Hayek, Cheska Giggles, Emily Osment, Charity Giggles, Ryan Pinkston, Arnold, Robert Vito, Rez, Bob Wagner, Francis, Courtney Giants, Mectra, Steve Buscemi, Romero, Bill Paxton, Dinky Winks, George Clooney, Devlin, Elijah Wood, The Guy, All Original.